Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. So, if you've seen my other videos, you know I recently received a ZWO ASI 533MC Pro one-shot color camera. And uh, what you see on my screen right now, uh, that's a Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station down in Landers, California, and that's uh, my pad there that I um, have been assigned. And uh, I'm heading down there. Today is April 2nd. I'm going to leave on the 4th, spend the night in Santa Barbara, and then go across into the desert. Um, the uh, M101 is available. I just want to get some first light through the uh, camera, um, make sure you know it's functioning, those type of things, cool it, uh, do different things. But right now I have it hooked up to um, my laptop and uh, I'm going to turn it on here shortly once I uh, fire up Nina. And the other thing I did is I uh, received my Optolong L Extreme uh, dual band uh, filter that I'll use with uh, the 533. Although at times um, I'll use the luminous filter, ZWO luminous filter as well. So what I have in my filter wheel now is I have uh, a set of uh, ZWO filters, luminous RGB, and now I have um, uh, HA S2 O3 from Antalia, and they're at three nanometer. And then, of course, I have the uh, Optolong that I just put in. So the other thing I'm going to do here is make sure I have all uh, the filter names correct and that uh, they're in the proper position so I don't duplicate what I did last year uh, where I had filters in, in the wrong position. So, okay, let's uh, get started. I'm going to power up uh, uh, the camera. So what I'm using is I'm using my Jackery Explorer 1000, um, using the 12 volt, 10 amp uh, power source. Um, let's see here. Do I have? Okay, I now see the light on my 533. Uh, so I use a pocket uh, power box advance, um, and uh, now let's uh, bring up Nina. Although I'm not hearing what I would normally hear uh, when I connect this uh, configuration through to the USB. But let's see what we got here. Uh, let's bring up PowerBox Advance first, see what it's seeing. Um, and let's connect it. Uh, yeah, allow access. And these are the other things I'm doing. I'm making sure that all my software is updated on my laptop and drivers are updated. So uh, before I head down there, I'd rather spend the time in the comfort of my home than being down at, on site at uh, uh, Goat Mountain uh, to correct all these things. Although my uh, connectivity is good, and because I am uh, assigned a pad, I have access to two houses, and they have uh, internet connectivity and kitchens and all kinds of stuff. So if you're looking for a club in the uh, Southern California area, you might want to check out Riverside Astronomical Society. Uh, they are the ones that manage uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so I think that looks good. We got some power going. All right, and now let's see. Uh, okay, I'm going to load that profile. And again, I use a nighttime... Uh, or Nina, I refer to as Nina. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got no camera. Okay, so we're going to scan for devices. Okay, so let me bring up... Uh, I'm a little bit out of my normal sequence here, so let me bring up... Um, what am I not seeing here? <clears throat> oh, there it is. Okay. 
So it recognizes the camera. Okay, duh, I'm a little bit slow. Uh, this is the first time um, in a long time that I've attached a camera through Nino. So let's uh, bring that up and connect. All right, and we get the success down here. Uh, let me turn myself off. Um, uh, right. Um, okay, so what you see down here, and let me just fix that. Okay, so we got success. And let's just kind of look at what it says. The camera state is idle. Uh, sensor type, as we see here, is RGGB. And that's going to become important, and I have to remember that because as I'm collecting the one-shot color camera images uh, from this camera, I'm going to have to debayer them as a step uh, in PixInsight, as I understand it. Uh, sensor size, look at that. It's reading the correct sensor size. Uh, minimum and max exposure time, I guess that's in, uh, in seconds, I don't know. Max binning four, okay, that's the max binning. Um, here is the uh, pixel size in microns, 3.76, that's what I expected. And I'll have to look in the, in the technical docs for this AS, uh, ASI 533 to make sure you know, what is the um, correct gain and offset. Uh, but it appears that's what it's set now, and so maybe that is the default. Okay, that looks good. So let's get, uh, let's get to cooling this uh, to a minus 10 and see what uh, happens there. All right, and then... Well, that's cooling a bit. The other thing I wanted to check are my filter wheel uh, and options. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. General. Okay, I'm on options. Equipment. Okay, so this is something I got to pay a lot of attention to right now. Okay, good. It carries forward to pixel size 3.76. The bear pattern is auto. Um, I can change it to RGGB. At this point, I don't know um, if there's a benefit to doing that. For right now, I'm going to leave it at auto. Okay, it's got my correct focal length and focal ratio. Uh, so that all looks good. Now, let's see. Can I go in here? Luminous red, green, blue. Uh, can I change that? And this is going to be HA, and I'm not going to designate uh, 3 nanometers anymore because I had a mix of a 3 nanometer uh, HA uh, and a 7 nanometer, 7 nanometer uh, S2 and O3. So I'm going to leave that alone, and then I'm going to come here and this is now, uh, I'm just going to give it the and just again I think you know I will learn but it would seem to me with the 533 one shot color camera um, and this being a dual uh, this L Optolong uh, L Extreme is a dual band filter uh, I'm going to want to be mindful or cognizant of when I should use that luminous filter, in a sense, on which targets, and when should I use uh, this luminous filter. And uh, being that I am going to be trying to image uh, M101, um, I'm going to use the this loom filter with the uh, 533 um, because I want the full... Uh, RGB spectrum for that target. So this is part of what I'm going to learn as as I work with this camera. Okay, so that um, really looks good. Nothing's uh, uh, sticking out. But there was another way I could see my filter wheel. So let's go back to the equipment. And um, there's my filter wheel. And, uh, oh, let's connect it. Uh, okay, so 
Now my filter wheel is connected. It picked up the names that I gave it. So this is position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that looks good. Now I I think the other thing that I need to be mindful of is when I go into uh, the focuser. Do I have that connected? Um, okay. Now, um, there's one more place that I have to be aware of, um, of where the position of the filters are. And maybe it was with Dark Custom. Um, so, okay, I'm not going to dig into that right now, but I think ultimately what I need to do is I need to go in and create a sequence for uh, dark customs um, to uh, do the auto, uh, f you know, set the uh, filter offset for my filters. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle the LX stream because I think the uh, Loom, RGB, and narrowband filters, I'll establish that with my ASI 294mm. Uh, pro monochrome camera and then I think when it comes time to use the L extreme uh, filter I'll I'll figure out what I got to do there but uh, uh, you know when I autofocus that filter it'll be with the a533 so all right uh, so I'm happy with what I see uh, I'm sure I could maybe uh, run into other issues um, and what I may do tonight is, while this uh, ASI 533 does not require darks, um, I may just uh, bring the telescope, everything outside, uh, and just put it on a bench on my picnic table and just uh, capture some dark frames uh, with it and see what those frames uh, look like. Um, and again, you know, the expectation is unlike my ASI 294mm, where I get the amp glow, uh, there should be no amp glow with this camera as I understand it. So, all right, good. Um, first step was to power it up and let it run a bit, uh, make sure it was not dead on arrival. And uh, so far, so good. Um, Everything looks good here as far as the uh, the camera profile, the camera state, the uh, pixel size. So I can't really think of uh, much else to do. I will uh, go to the ZWO website and get some uh, idea on, uh, I, I don't know what they call it, uh, unity gain. Um, I'll look for some information on that. And, uh, you know, so if you have some information, you have to see this video and you're using the uh, 533 or just in general, uh, how do you set uh, your, uh, def your gain? Uh, with the ASI 294, I just basically left it at default, but maybe I should be tweaking it in certain situations. And I think that's something I'll learn as, uh, as I use this uh, camera. So. All right, well, just wanted to make a short video. So far, everything on the desktop is looking good. I think I got my laptop uh, properly set up. I will uh, hook up my other laptop as well. I carry a, a spare laptop in case the main laptop goes down. In the future, I would like to downsize all that and travel a little bit lighter. But right now, uh, since I have the van, uh, you know, I got a lot of room so I can shove a lot of stuff in there and uh, but I think I should work towards uh, uh, downsizing a bit uh, maybe later this year okay so if you like this kind of content uh, let me bring myself back up uh, if you like this kind of content please give it a thumbs up as always like share and subscribe and I'm really uh, excited and and you know uh, thankful uh, to you viewers for uh, being very responsive to several of my recent videos, giving me a lot of great input, in particular the one on where uh, titled I opened the Pandora's box of uh, astronomical imaging. Um, you know, it's sinking in that once I stepped into the image processing side, 
it appears it becomes more of an artistic pursuit. So if I just make sure that the data that I'm bringing into the processing is good quality, uh, not a lot of guiding errors and you know the stars look round and they're not oblong and those type of things, uh, then when you start processing it becomes uh, more of an artistic pursuit. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that, but I will get used to that uh, over time. So, all right, thanks again. Till next time.